greetings to you in the wonderful name of Jesus. We are so excited to have this moment to just share with you a word of encouragement from, from the word of the Lord today. Uh, I pray that you are well. I pray that your family is well. I pray that even at the start of this week, that as you invite the Lord to be part of your life, as you journey with him, may the spirit of the Lord reveal great truths to you. May you find success. May you find breakthroughs. May you find answered prayers and divine manifestations of the miraculous power of God in your life. We are, we are so excited to have been on this journey together and just to encourage you with the word of the Lord. You know, um, in a world of uncertainty, in times of uncertainty, when, when people go through, through tragedies, through losses, go through many uh, difficult moments in their lives, often we, we try to look for a solution to a place or, or to a person. We've learned, uh, the scripture tells us, we cannot lean on arms of flesh because the arms of flesh will fail us. That means we can't, we, there's no guarantee, there's no assurances that people and things will always be the same. So we cannot even rely on ourselves because we know how many times we fail, how, how many times we fought it. So we've learned how to put our trust in the Lord. I was speaking on Friday about trusting in faith. You know, faith is, and, and I believe that faith is also built on us standing on the promises of God. There was an old song that used to be sang in churches. It talks about standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ my Savior. There is no better foundation. There is no better foundation than Jesus Christ himself. He is the rock of our salvation. He is our strength. He is our refuge. He is our strong tower. He is the place where we can run into. David says it like this. We can run into him and be saved. Amen. And so today I want to speak a little bit about the promises of God. Being built up in the promises of God. I, I believe this is a very, very important part is that the promises of God do not change because the promises of God carries and is the word of the Lord to us. And the Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain. Amen. That means God said his word will remain. That which he has spoken, that which he has released, that which he has commanded, that which he has, uh, has shared with us, that word will stand forever. Now, as we look through scripture, there's over 7,000 promises in scripture. Promises that we can hold on to. Promises that we can, when, when, when times are difficult and you're going through challenges in your life, you can, you can, you can go through, through those promises and appropriate it for yourself. Now, one of the things about promises in the word of the Lord is that it was not only for the people the promise was made to. That means I can apply a promise and we're going to look at the book of Joshua chapter 1 today. And I want to draw a parallel and show you how some of the promises that God made to Joshua is also applicable to us as well. In the, book of, uh, in the book of Joshua, there are over 13 promises that God makes to Joshua. Now we know that Joshua has taken over leadership from Moses. We know that Joshua uh, has got an arduous task. He's got the task of now taking the people beyond, from the wilderness, beyond the Jordan, into the promised land. But he's dealing with a people that have become discontented, a people that have come to the place where they've questioned, they've doubted. There's also, every time there's a transition in leadership, people always find confusion. You know, Paul, Paul said this, he said, Paul says this, he says, when, when I leave, there will be ravenous wolves that will come amongst you. 
He was talking about, he's saying, there are people that will come in trying to divide. The, the, the spirit of the world was never to, to keep in harmonize or harmonize things. It was always to sow seeds of destruction. So he's saying there are those that will arise up. And he says they're not only external people that will come in. He says it will be internal people whose hearts will be turned toward each other. And they will cause divisions. Paul wrote this and he said this is the challenge. Joshua is in the place where he's taking over leadership. And I don't think that it was easy for him. There may have been others that may have thought that they would have been a better choice. But we know that Joshua was God's choice. And this is the important part. For any of you that are going through transitions and even experiencing transitions in churches, this understand, follow God's choice. That's important. But I want to stay with, with our topic today, build your life on the promises of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20, the prop, we hear that the promises of God are A and Amen. The scripture says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ, and so through him, amen, is spoken to us by the glory of God. So he's saying the promises that God made are yes in Christ. So, that, so Christ is the guarantee of the promises of God being fulfilled. And then he says, therefore, to that we can say, amen. And amen basically means every time you utter amen, you say, so let it be. And now, so, so when, when, when we look at the promises, and we know they are yes and amen in Christ. And so, as, as we look at this, we see in Joshua chapter 1, verses 3, at the beginning of Joshua's journey, Joshua is standing on the wilderness side of the Jordan, and God makes certain promises to him in verses 3. And God says, and I will give you every place your foot, you set your foot as I promised Moses. So he's saying to him, I will give you. That's a promise to, to Joshua. So Joshua was, 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 was stepping in faith, but his faith was built on the fact that God said, said it, I'm going to give you every place your foot will tread. So he's, he's understanding that he's, he's, he's not just journeying alone. He's understanding that this is not something that he has to fulfill alone. But God says, every place your foot shall tread, I will give to you. I want you to understand, when God gives you an assignment, he always also ensures his support of the assignment. You find that God, God gave Joshua a promise even at the start. For any, any man, woman of God, any person with a vision from the Lord, along with the vision, God will give you a promise of what he is going to do in keeping it. In jo at the end of Joshua's life, he reflects on God's keeping his promises. In Joshua chapter 23, verse 14, he says, Now I'm, I'm going to go away from all the earth. So he's at the end of his life. And he says, you know with all your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises the Lord gave us has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. Imagine, what a, what a powerful thing. I want to assure you today, as you're listening, Whatever the promise God has made to you, it will never fail. Every promise God made, he kept. And if you want to understand God's dream, God's plan for your life, you must build your life on the promises of God. That's why I ask you the question today, what is God's promise to you? To Joshua? He makes a few promises in Joshua chapter 1. The first promise he makes in Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. God says to, to, to him, he says, as, 
as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. But he says in verse 5, he says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So God's first promise to Joshua is that he, he promises him strength for life. He says to him, the task that I gave you, no one will be able to stand against you. The second thing he gives him is the promise of success. He says, if you would obey the word that I give you, you will be successful. Verse 6 and 7, he talks about being strong, be courageous, because you're going to lead the people into the land that I swore to them. And he goes on in verse 7 and he says, again, be strong, be courageous, be careful to obey the law of the servant Moses gave to you and do not turn from the left or to the right. God was saying to him, the assignment that I'm giving to you, not only am I giving you strength, I'm giving you success. And God said to him, do not stray to the left or to the right. He knew that people will try to influence him. Often in your journey, there will be people that will try to influence you away, but you stand on the promises that come from the word of God. There's no better guarantee. The promise of God to you is a guarantee. And then the third point was, God promises success, support. In verses 9, he says, I will be with you. I will be with you. God's work, when we do God's work, His way, we can be guaranteed of God's support. Not your way. Not somebody else's way, but God's way. You can be guaranteed of his support. Every promise God gives in scripture is also is followed or is based on a premise or a condition. The condition implies that if you do what God tells you to do, you will get what God told you you will get. Now, many times we want the promises, but we do not adhere to the conditions. And when we look closely, God's condition for success for Joshua wasn't based on his intelligence, wasn't based on his skill, was not, was not based on any human ability that he had or how accomplished he was or how, how handsome he was, or how beautiful you can be. No, no, no. He, 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 the God's condition for success for him was based on his ability to obey his word. So what am I saying to you? The secret for, for appropriating the promises for your life is based on your, the condition of you obeying the word of the Lord. Now this is very important. Remember to memorize the word, study the word, internalize the word, obey the word. The word must become practical in your life. Now in, in verses 8, and I'm ending here, God gives an instruction there's a few things that Joshua had to do. Firstly, he says you have to remember my word. Right? Remember my word. Then he says you must obey the word. Obey all that is written in it. This is very important. And as you focus on remembering and obeying the word of the Lord, you will start to get all that God has for you. There's, there's, there's five things. If I break verse 8 up, it says, Remember what is written. Study the word day and night. Obey the word. And when you do this, the condition, when you meet these conditions, this is the blessing. And you will be wise and successful in everything. I pray this for, for you. I pray that for good success. I pray that the favor of the Lord will be upon your life. But there's a condition. It's attached to remembering the word, studying the word, obeying the word. When you do that, 
you'll be wise and successful in everything. I want you to understand the promises of God are yes and amen. I do not know what you're facing. I do not know what you're going through. But I can assure you, I lead you to the rock that is higher than I, to Jesus Christ. And I can tell you his promises. See, people can promise you. I can even promise you things. Some things I would never be able to keep up to. But you know what, God? He says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Irrespective of what you are going through, hold on to the promises of God. Build your life on the promises of God. Because I can tell you, it's a sure, it's a guaranteed success. In Jesus' name. Let's bow our heads. Father, we bless you. We glorify you. We honor you. We thank you for your sons and your daughters. Thank you, O oh God, that you are, you know them by name. You know the number of hair upon our head. You, you, O oh God, you, you said if you, if your eyes are upon the sparrow, how much more do you watch over your sons and daughters? And so I pray today that they would know that they are never alone, but you are with them. You are present in their lives. I pray, O oh God, that even that they would take courage. I pray for strength. I pray for fortitude. I pray that they will be strong and very courageous in the days that we are living in. And they will hold on to the promises of God. And I pray that there will be a fulfillment of the promises of God that you've given them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, go with God. Trust him. He's going to show up miraculously in your life. God bless you.